Yeah, that's a cracker fish. Yeah. How good is that? Go, son, go. Have a go, man. G'day, ladies and gents, and welcome to another Sammy Hitsky fishing adventure. Now, I already know what you're thinking. You're probably going, what the bloody hell is going on here? Can't see any water, no sunrise in the background. Doesn't even look like you'd have a cast here, and you'd be right. You're joining me in my boat port, and uh, before you change videos, don't stress, there is plenty of fishing coming tomorrow. But right now, I want to go through a bit of a project I've been working on with a few people for about the last three months. It's a little modification to the old girl that I think could possibly be a real game changer. Uh, so much so that it hasn't really been done before, so we had to kind of make it all up from scratch and just design and make things to fit and make this thing work. Now, what I'm talking about you will soon find out, but yeah, if anyone has seen one done like this before, please let me know. I saw a couple of versions over in the States, uh, and we took some inspiration from there. But in terms of Australia, I haven't seen much like it out there. Uh, definitely on a lot bigger boats, uh, they have it, and they're mounted theirs a bit differently. Uh, but the way I've done mine, well, I think it's pretty unique. And look, I can't wait to get it out on the water to test. Now, without cheating, see if you can guess what I've done to the boat. Put it in the comments below, make sure you timestamp it so I know you're not cheating and uh, have a stab at the dark and see what you reckon I've done to make this boat even better. I'll give you two seconds and then we're gonna go check it out. Now for those of you who guessed brand new transducer, well congratulations, you are spot on. But a new transducer isn't that special, is it? Well it is, if you've got the transducer that I got. Ladies and gentlemen, you're about to see something very, very special. Check this out. So to say it how the cool kids would be saying it, this is your transducer, and this is a transducer she told you not to worry about. Have a go at the size of that thing. That is a two kilowatt transducer. Now it is a low and medium frequency, and this thing I'm hoping is gonna be an absolute game changer out in the deep water. I'm talking blue eye in 500 meters, all that cool stuff. This thing should take it in its stride. It's also gonna be really good for trolling around when I'm trolling for game fish out there for finding spots on the run. Being two kilowatt, it's gonna have plenty of power, really nice return and show me plenty of fish even when I'm moving. Now these transducers are generally mounted on big game boats underneath the hull on a big fairing block system. But because I do all sorts of fishing in this, including flathead fishing uh, in like bugger or water, Having a fairing block underneath the hull wasn't an option. So, I had to reach out to a good mate of mine, Robbie Payne, and his engineering firm, and he think tanked up an awesome little bracket so I could transom mount it. I'm gonna go through this bracket with you because it is very special. Um, a few things that I wanted to do is be able to completely remove this transducer so when I was fishing in the estuaries and not deep dropping at all, I could take it off. This transducer weighs nine and a half kilos and is 50 centimeters long. So you don't want it hanging off the back of your boat if you're not gonna use it. So I wanted a bracket that was removable and I wanted to be able to take it in and out of the water while it was fixed to the boat. Because again, I don't wanna be traveling out 70 k's offshore dragging this behind the boat. It'd just about make the boat go in circles, I reckon. So I wanted to be able to fold the transducer up then when I got out there, fold it back down, use the transducer, and when it was time to go home, fold it back up again, head home, go and butt out fishing the next day, take the whole transducer off and uh, be on my way. So there was a lot that we needed done, a fair few hurdles, but Robbie Payne has done an absolute number on this thing and it has come up a treat. Now obviously this is in the down position, so this is when it's in use. When I'm not using, all I've got to do is pull the split pin, pull this pin, and the whole thing, obviously that's not usually there, the whole thing folds up, and then pin goes in the back side, and then I can travel with the whole transducer out of the water, not creating any drag. I'll just get a shot of this other side so you can see where the pin goes in. And that's the pin there. Now we're ready to use it again. Pin comes out, transducer folds down, 
Oops, wrong light. Pin goes in, split pin, and we're in business. Now you're probably going, yeah, I get it, but how do you do that when you're out there? Well, it's actually easier to do it from inside the boat than it is to do it on the outside of the boat, and I'll demonstrate that right now. So when I'm out there, all I've got to do is kneel at the back section of my boat, come to terms with the fact that I'm going to get wet hands. It's probably going to be easier in the water as well because the weight will be off that transducer rather than it just being hanging in the air. But all I do, lean over, pull the split pin out. Now you see, I've attached a bit of a safety lanyard to the pin here, so in case I drop it, I can still uh, get it back. Now, pull that, up it comes. Whoop, pin goes back in the other side. And then split pin. Job done. How cool is that? Robbie Payne has done an absolute awesome job. I'll actually put his business contact details in the description of this video. So if you guys do need any boat work done that requires an intricate little bracket like this, um, you can give Robbie a call and he'll sort you out. He's a mastermind for this sort of thing. So uh, yeah, he can help you out with all that. But that's pretty cool. Is that not cool? That is definitely going to be a game changer. Two kilowatt transducer on a 5.6 meter boat. If we can't see him with this, then it's probably not worth going. Now I mentioned it was fully removable. Now to take this whole arm off, obviously this bracket will stay on the boat, it's bolted on. But to take this long bracket off, all I need to do is pull the pin here, and then pull the pin here, and that whole bar slides out. Sorry. And that whole bar will slide out, and I can take this whole transducer off, and uh, I can keep it in the shed and I won't have to run around with it on. Now you're probably wondering how the cables are run. At the moment, the best thing I can come up with is to just have them on the ground. I keep them in this waterproof backpack. That sits here. Then when I want to use it, I'll just run the cables up the side of the boat, put them in behind the esky there, and then run them through into my console and plug it into my Simrad S5100. That's what I've come up with so far. Obviously that might chop and change after I get out in the water and give it a few test runs, but for now, I'm pretty damn excited. Very excited. In fact, we're gonna give it a whirl tomorrow. We're heading deep. We're gonna chase some critters. Fingers crossed, this new transducer will bring us some good luck and we can find something tasty. Stay tuned, the next time you see me, we'll be out in the water, hopefully dropping a bait. Well, ladies and gents, what a morning to do a water test. I got out here a little later than I would have liked, but it is flat calm, flat calm. We've got a bit of cloud cover as well, just to keep it interesting. We're in uh, 250 meters of water, and I've just put the first baits down. And look, if the show that's on the sander is anything to go by, I reckon we're in for a bit of a treat. Uh, the transducer, I've just put it down, did a couple of passes over, it looks epic. I'm going to chuck some screenshots in the video so you guys can see what I'm seeing. But fingers crossed the fish are on the chew as well because I'd love to get some more critters from the deep. We're going to start in this shallow stuff then work our way out. Oh, getting a bite, getting a bite. Well, I didn't get that one, but we're getting bites and that's always a good sign. Yes, got him on. Got him on. Yes. Got one. You got the hook into one now, so it looks like a decent fish. It's having a bit of a kick. No idea what it is. 160 meters to go. Fingers crossed it's something tasty. Had a nice little set of bites on it. Just tap and tap and tap and tap and then load it up. So fingers crossed it's something cool. No, don't get sharked. I think we're getting sharked.
We might be getting sharked here, guys. No! Oh, we've got either a shark or we've got something else as well. Either way, we got both of them. Well, it's all going on now. 30 meters. I've got no idea what is going on because we definitely had something small bottom fish on and then something big happened. So whether we got eaten by a kingfish or a little tuna or something on the way up, not sure. Keep him out of the outboard here. Oh, we got a flamey. Oh, it's a ruby. Oh my God. Oh my God. We've got a ruby snapper and a monstrous bonito. Oh, oh that's so epic. Well, that Benito, he can just, he can chill down there. Let's grab the hooks out of this guy. <laughs> um, guys, the first fish with my new transducer is a PB, a new species. That is a ruby snapper. Yes! <laughs> I've been wanting to catch one of these for years and years and years. These fish actually started my obsession with deep water fishing. They catch them over in Exmouth and up north. These guys get really, really big, but to get one in Brizzy, how epic is that? <laughs> and it's a good size one too. They get to like 20 kilos, but for Brisbane, that is unreal. A ruby snapper. Yes! If there's ever a way to break in the new transducer, well, I think we have done it in style. And we've still got a big, big Benito. We'll, um, we'll deal with him in a second. Ruby Snapper! Righto, sorted that mess out. Have a go at the size of this Benito. That is an absolute belter. Obviously this guy will be coming back for bait. Fantastic bait. Apparently really good eating too. Um, Rossi McCubbin, when we went out with him, he has some Bonito done up for us. And uh, very, very good eating. Uh, this guy, I reckon, will make tailor baits. But the next one, if I get another one, well, that can be uh, an eater. But big Bonito and a ruby. All right, I'm gonna make sure, give this guy the big bleed, apparently they're fantastic eating. I've never eaten a ruby snapper before, but we're about to. Whoa, need a bit of R there too. Oh, we down. Oh, we're down. Still stoked about that guy. Oh, no. Let's check those baits. Oh. oh I think it's happened again. Oh, we're on. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Stroth. This might be a... I think we've got ourselves another Benito. <laughs> Have a go at this. This might even be a bigger one. This might be a kingfish or something. All I know is it's 100 and 170 metres away. And we've still got it. <laughs> Ew! Well, we should be just about to get some colour. 
How far are we? 30 meters away. What have we got? Is it something different? Or is it another big bonnie? I'm not gonna complain about another big bonnie actually. So I do want to try eating one. But um if it's a kingfish even better. Bit more variety. This is going awesome. Oh, I picked it like a dirty nose. That's a kingy. That's a nice kingy too. That's why he was going backwards. Come hither, my friend. Come hither, hither. Oh. Well, that's why he was pulling. He's eating two of the baits too, the greedy bugger. <laughs> you! Three different species in three drops. Yes! And let's hold this guy up to you guys. Check out that. Yellowtail kingfish. He ate the bait. I'm not going to complain because he's a really nice chewing size as well. Um, he can come home with us. A bit of sashimi. I think will go very, very nicely. I was wondering why that reel was going backwards at a rate or not. And uh, a kingy like that will do it every day of the week. How good is this session going? They're on the chew and I want to get back down there. I'll get rid of this guy, dispatch him, get him on the ice. We're to get this line straight back down. And away we go. Do we have one? Not sure if we have one or we're just getting little hits on the way up. We might have one. Might have something small. Let's get those baits up, give them a refresh. Oh, we're about to get a look at this guy. I reckon it'd be a little nanny or a little ornate jobby. It's only small. Oh, I think I was... Oh, this... you're kidding. Well, that is a little pinky snapper. Now, that's not what I was expecting from this depth. Hello, Mr. Snapper. What are you doing out here? Well, I'll tell you what guys, aside from the tangled rig, that's not what I was expecting to come up from the depths. The only other snapper I've seen oh, from this depth was uh, out with Lucky Strike with Ross. So um, yeah, not even a big snapper, a little panty from 250 meters. Crazy. These guys don't really release well from from the depth, and I um I've got a uh, I got a home for him at my place, so he can come with us. That is four drops and four different fish. Sorry, that is three drops and four different fish. <laughs> How epic is this going? Why do we lose it? Oh, we got him. Well, how's that? We got another good one on here, guys. Literally the second it hit the bottom. Now, oh, that's a good fish. Oh, I hope it's something red. I hope it's something red. Whatever this fish is, it's a cracker. Stalling the reel up. I really hope it's something red. I'll even take a cod. I'll go something brown as well. I must have landed that right on this guy's nose because it literally hit the bottom, 
I put the reel in and it just went duh, 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 duh. fish on. Fingers crossed, be red. Please, please, please. Oh, it's a good fish. Woo, come on. This one has me excited. I got the gaff. 130 to go. If this is a flamey or something like this, this day is turning out to be all time, like all time. Obviously caught a flamey with uh, Sean. I caught a few since then with Ross and we had a day where I took the family out and we uh, we caught some out with Sean o then as well. But this, this looks good, really good. I'm getting excited, sorry. I'm talking too much, but it looks really good. Just gonna back him off there. Don't wanna pull the hooks now. Oh, you're kidding! It's a flamey! It's a flamey! And it's a good flamey too! Oh, yes! 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 Is he well hooked? Is he well hooked? Doesn't matter because he's mine now anyway! Yes! Oh, grab these hooks out. So we can avoid a mess. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we are having a session today. Ruby snapper, flame tail snapper, normal snapper, kingfish and a bonito. All off my local. That makes it even more special because I haven't caught any of these fish out here, apart from the snapper and kingy and bonito, obviously. But uh I am stoked. What a beautiful flamey. Oh, this is epic. I gotta get these lines back down there. Everything is chewing. The whole bloody kitchen sinks down there. Yee hoo hoo Brizzy flamey, brizzy flamey. Oh guys, I'm stoked. Sorry for acting like a pillock, but uh, flame tail snapper, off me local. Thanks for coming. Okay. This esky is coming along absolutely insanely. Some nice red in there. Bit of silver. How epic! Well, this is absolutely insane. Many, many different species. Um, I reckon we're a bar cut off getting the Morton Deep Slam. Uh, we'll go have a look for a blue eye later. But if we can get a bar cod as well, then I reckon I've got the tastiest box of fish in, uh, in South East Queensland today. Out of control. A little nibble there. moment but we're gonna leave it down there and see if we can't upgrade. Come on. There we go. There we go. There we go. Yes. Whatever that is, it's a good one. Yew! Yew! I think we might have another tasty one. Still on there? Yeah, it's still on there. Yep. 
It is going off today. Yeah, it's a good fish. It's a good fish. Stalling the reel out. Oh, really good fish. What is this? It ate it on the bottom, so it makes me fingers crossed for another flame or a ruby. What's he gonna be? What's he gonna be? I, I really think this might be another flamey or something cool like that. The day we're having, who knows? Who knows what'll be up next? You guys are gonna see it before me. Got the underwater camera down for you. Shouldn't be far off now. There's some colour. What is it? What is it, guys? Oh, it's a flamey. It's another flamey. We've got another flamey. Oh, my goodness me. It's a cracker of a flamey. Oh, my goodness. It's a really nice one. It's a really, really nice one. It's a really, really nice one. Yes! Have a go at that for a flamey. Yes! What's this other thing? What have we got here? Oh, we've got a Comet Cod. Did I not say, did I not say we're only a Bar Cod away from the Morton Slam? Well, this is a Comet Cod, be it a small one, and that is a new species for me off Morton as well. This is out of control. Let's just, Yeet that for a bit. That is a little comet cod. I'll have to make sure he's 38. These guys are fantastic chewing, but this guy's a little on the small side. Actually, let's deal with him in a moment. And let's have a little bow peep at this guy here. What an absolute stud flame tail snapper. That is a belter. Absolute belter. That is a day maker right there. That is a PB flamey off me local. It doesn't get too much better. What a stunning fish. Oh, this day is turning into one of the all time, all time days. So, so cool. What a beautiful fish. That is out of control. Yes. Got something small on there, I reckon. Get him up, refresh the baits, get back down. Not sure what this is. It's having more of a go now. 45 meters away. Could be a small flamey. I reckon maybe a nanny. About to find out though. Where is he? There he is, there's colour. Possibly picked it like a nose. Oh no. What is that? What is that? Is that a rosy job fish? I think it is a rosy job fish. Well, why not keep with the uh, mixed bag of lollies theme? What have I done? I don't know. Have a go at this critter. I'm pretty sure it's a rosy job fish. I will get clarification for you guys. I haven't caught one of these things in years. Um, yeah, just another job fish to add to the list today. This is out of control fishing. I can't believe it. Do I give credit to the new transducer or do I just blame it on a fluke and I'm just having a cracking day? Who knows, either way, I'm having an absolute ball. Holy dooly. Whoa. 
Bugger. What just happened then? That might have been our cod. I think we got one. Let's be greedy. Let's be greedy. Here we go. That's a good one. There we go, that might be a cod, guys. Oh. Come on, fella. I think we got a cod on. Just gonna go easy on him. I only got small hooks. Oh. Oh! No! No! That was our cod. That was our cod. He was a good one too. He was playing up. What are we... No! Oh, I think we might have busted rig here. What a shame. That would have been cool to get a cod. Probably don't need the fillets, but would have been cool to see and top off the day. Seemed like a good one too, he was really digging. I, um, I'll loosen the drag off a little bit just to let him have his head because they only got small hooks on and um, well he's either made the bottom or um, busted me rig, I'll soon find out. So he's busted the sinker and the dropper. So uh, that's a bit of a toweling if you ask me. But I reckon that is a good time to call it. I'm going to head out deeper while this weather's perfect, have a bit of a scout around, see how the transducer goes in the deep water. Might sneak out to four or five hundred, see what it looks like out there. And then I'm going to boost at home. Got plenty of fish, don't need any more fish, although I would have liked that cod. Just to be greedy, I would have liked that cod. Um, I think there is zero denying that that was an absolute crazy session. How was the variety of species? Anyway, I'll show you back home when we get on the filleting table. I am so stoked. So, so stoked. Well guys, you may have guessed it, I didn't catch anything in the super deep stuff. I did find a pretty cool show on the sander though. Check this out. Now, I ran it past a couple of friends of mine who are really into their deep stuff. They reckon this patch of fish here, that's a school of blue eye, and then the other patch, this patch here, that is a school of bait. Now, when the blue eye sit on top of the bait, it's game on, but today, they wouldn't touch a bait. I didn't get a single bite there, so I gave it about half an hour and then I cruised home. But I'm definitely not gonna complain because this is by far the best deep dropping haul I've had in my local area. Have a go at this for some color. We've got two flamies, a ruby, which I've never ever caught before. So stoked to finally tick it off the list. We've got a rosy jobfish, little squire, a comet cod, a kingy, and a bonito. And I dropped two cod as well. The amount of tasty fillets in this haul here is simply mind boggling and for that reason I reckon I've earned myself a beer. So here's to the new transducer. May it continue to bring hauls like this. <sighs> Delicious. Now guys I figure I'm probably not going to get this opportunity again anytime soon so I'm going to compare the flesh on a flame tail snapper, ruby snapper, rosy jobfish and maybe just a snapper as well, and give you guys a bit of comparison of what they all look like. We don't have time this video for catch and cook. I've done heaps of catch and cooks lately. Um, so you're just gonna take my word for it that they're all probably gonna be very, very tasty. Um, but I thought, why not compare them all so we can have a look at what they look like side by side. I reckon that'll be a fun activity. Anyways, I better get 
some of these guys back on the ice and start this fielding process. Enjoy this time lapse, then we'll have a chat at the end when we can get them all lined up. go guys there's the flame tail there's the ruby you've got the rosy job fish and the snapper now I've tasted the flamey before absolutely epic the ruby and the rosy they are they look a very similar color nice clean uh, light colored flesh delicious and snapper well everyone knows how snapper tastes I'm very excited with these guys a lot of tasty tasty fillets there yum 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 well, that's a pretty cool little comparison there. I might uh, get stuck into this fielding. We'll have a bit of a chat inside. I'm still stoked. What a session. Yes. Well, guys, I changed my mind. I thought we might finish off the episode out here at the fielding table for the sole reason of why not. Um, no tackle talk this week. Uh, We've been through plenty already, so we're just going to sign it off right here. Uh, quick one from the website. Had some new hats drop got a sick new five panel now I'd love to model it for you but unfortunately they just do not suit my head I've got a big melon and um, yeah these ones suit people unfortunately I'm not one of them but they are a sick tan uh, five panel really cool looking hat really stylish apparently a very in style at the moment I wouldn't know I'm not a stylish person uh, we've got the fandom tools these guys are in stock at the moment as well. If you want to find out how they work, head over to the website and there's a little video there that shows you how they're, how they're used. And of course, one of the latest shirts and one of my favorites, Leave the Lawn, Fish the Dawn. What an absolute belter. A Little bit of green on the front there as well. Guys, if any of that merch tickles your fancy or you'd like to check out any of the other stuff we have on offer, head over to my website, sammyhitskyfishing.com. That's all for this week, guys. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Make sure you give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe because there's new fishing action coming every single week. Hope you're getting out there and catching a few, guys. Have a good one. See you later.